another day another video well good morning world welcome back to auto auction rebuilds today we're gonna do a copart walk around and you're gonna get the video the same day I record it because it is Friday but you know what we got to do real quick real fast we have got to uh, we got to put the title and everything in this car because this one oh, chirp chirp yep this one is heading off to insurance auto auctions they're supposed to come pick it up hopefully today to make sure it still runs oops that was my bad yeah no lights still no lights she still runs great perfect now i know you guys saw this sitting here and i'm sure you have a few questions not to worry we'll be addressing this uh how about tomorrow why don't we address the range rover supercharged tomorrow yeah we're stepping things up a little bit over here I forgot to move my truck. I don't like the way that's parked, but that's all right. Today, we're gonna do something a little different though. Uh, it's rare that I take my bike anywhere. In fact, I probably don't have more than, I don't know, 250 miles on it. But today, we're gonna take it to Copart, which means I gotta get suited up. Jacket, helmet, gloves, dress for the slide, not the ride. How many miles we got? Oh, wow. We only have 191 miles on it. Okay, yeah, we definitely need to get this thing turned around. We'll mount the camera to the bike. We'll see if we can't do a little moto vlog on the way to Copart today. All right, guys. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but uh, we'll try it out. I'm not, I'm not a moto vlogger, but uh, we'll see what happens. Fire in the hole. guys we made it to Copart we got the bike parked and uh, I guess we'll go start this walk around what do you say let's go well I guess we'll start out with the 2009 bummer Beamer it's a 128 I someone you know painted it to look like it's a like an M car or something no it's not it's listed as a run and drive though I'm not sure why it's here 106,000 miles that's why it's here <laughs> I'm just kidding the top is in Eh, pretty rough shape the quarter window must be missing honestly it needs a new top the body though the body doesn't look too bad or maybe these quarter windows just don't work because this one's all taped up too which means we're not going to be able to get inside okay well that sucks let me uh let me get y'all in there so you can get a look at the interior and i guess you could tell me if it looks no it doesn't i can already tell she looks rough man she looks, she looks real rough. Come on, camera out. Yeah, uh, I didn't pull this down, by the way. This has lost all of its sticky. This is a bad one. Let's find something else. Well, this is new. Every time I come here, things have changed. It looks like they have moved 
the ATVs over here to their own little section. They must be rearranging something. I guess it makes it a little bit easier for us to walk around. We know where all the ATVs are. So we can take a quick look. It's hard to believe the insurance companies will even insure these. I mean, you buy these to tear up, right? Let's be serious. You buy these things because you're going to tear them up. You're going to be out just romping on them and destroying them. If I was an insurance guy, no. Nope. Nope, I wouldn't insure it. Uh, maybe against theft, but not against damage. A little Polaris 900, I say little. Compared to some of the side-by-sides I've seen, it is kind of little. Uh, we got a handle in here somewhere. Huh? There we go. There we go. One day I might get one, but it's going to be a while. I can tell you that. It's going to be a while. I'm not in any hurry to have one. I don't even know what I would do with it if I did have one. This is a nice one, though. I kind of like this. I wonder if it runs. It's got a key in it. Uh, of course, dead. Ignition was left on, and it's dead. That's going to be the case with most of these. We've got Polaris is everywhere out here. I mean, I'm not sure there's anything here other than Polaris. Yeah, okay. Well, there's who knows what those used to be. We've got some trailers over there. Ooh, ooh. Now this looks like the big daddy of them all right now. This is nice. A Polaris, this is a 21 Polaris Razor Pro XP. Oh man, take a look at that. Would you tell me that is not sick, man? This must have been a theft, right? Because it doesn't look... Oh, 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 wait. It's damaged. Oh, no. Oh, no. Some plastics are broken. Yeah, some plastics are broken. Really? I, I uh, okay. Okay. I mean, obviously, it, it either got hit or rolled. I'm going to bet probably rolled. Uh, the door is being held closed with a bungee because it doesn't... Uh, yeah, it doesn't latch anymore. Who cares, man? It's a toy. I mean, you had to know when you bought it, the dang thing was gonna get tore up, right? We got a Ranger XP over here, another 900. Uh, that little riding mower is still sitting here. And uh, yeah, more raises, more Polaris. Let's move on to cars. Now, seeing this Range Rover sitting here, Made, re made me remember something. I had somebody on Instagram that was just kind of going crazy on my Instagram about the Range Rover I bought, okay? And he tried telling me that I did not get a cheap Range Rover, that some guy called Automotive Lifestyle bought one for $700. $700, and he got the best deal. And I'm trying to explain that this is the generation that automotive lifestyle got. This is not my generation, okay? His was not supercharged. His was not the new body style. His was, I think, a 2007. Still, he got a cheap price on it. Got it for $700 from a dealer's auction, if I remember right, with no keys, but it's not the same, all right? It's not the same. Mine is a whole generation newer. Mine has the supercharged 510 horsepower engine. So you're comparing apples to oranges there. But yes, yes, he did pick one up for 700 bucks. And I do believe he got a great deal on it. Um, but you're not comparing apples to apples here. This one is an 08. 181,000 miles. She took a nasty little hit in the quarter panel right there. And I think that's that's about it. It's an HSC. Took a little damage to the hatch there. What about over here? Doesn't look too bad. The window must be stuck down a little bit. They've got some they got some tape over. We'll take a look at this. We'll take a look at this. Um, this is actually pretty nice. It really is. Other than the the ding in the back, which you know, I mean, it is what it is. Maybe a little suspension damage back there from the hit too. Hard to say. Okay, it doesn't want me to go inside of it. Let's see how the interior handled over 180,000 miles. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, okay. It looks fairly similar to mine. Fairly similar. A few, you know, a few things were obviously redesigned. Like mine has the, uh, the big screen and it looks a little more modernized inside. But aside from that, and mine's pushed to, push to start, but let's go ahead and put the key in it. Uh oh no we're not gonna start are we
Okay. Come on, man. Okay, stop. It's doing it on its own. Like, it just keeps cranking itself. And <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, we got it, man. Um, of course, check engine lights on. Yeah. But honestly, aside from a check engine light, uh, I don't see any other warning lights. We've got a very, uh, a very similar air ride and the controls for the different programs yeah this is this is nice this is real nice it'd be nicer if the uh if the vents here worked there we go let's try that ac is on turn that off there we go we'll pop the hood it's got the Harman Kardon Logic 7. This is very much like mine. Very much. Just a few minor differences. I think in 2010 is when they gave it a slight facelift. You know, these, uh, these slots here are a little bit different on mine. And the headlights are definitely different on mine. The front end is a little bit different. But I mean, it's a very similar vehicle. Just not the same. Okay. Now, I don't know what engine this is, but I'm guessing this is the 325 horsepower V8. That'd be my guess. I don't know what the displacement is. If I could find it here somewhere. It's a, uh, it's an eight liter. No, I'm just kidding. It's not an eight liter. I don't know what it is. Four point something, right? 4.2, 4.0, 4 4.2. 4 I don't know. I don't know. Either way, this one actually runs really, really quiet. Yeah, I like it. I do. It didn't. It didn't want to start, but I mean, it's actually running pretty well. Do you think the programs work on it? That's something I really am curious about. Notice that the rear end is not raising up either, so that's something to be concerned about. The uh, air suspension in these things is notoriously junk. You can switch this around to different programs. There it is: gravel, snow, mud, ruts recommended yeah yeah we'll, we'll keep it in a we'll keep it in terrain regular terrain how about that let's just leave it there and let's see if we can raise the suspension oh closed doors to change ride height very sorry very sorry didn't mean to bother you there it's a little upset with me because it wants the doors closed okay it's raising it is it's raising here it goes it should be at its maximum ride height right now. Okay. We'll find out if it works. Let's go check it. Does the important window work? It does. I really like this, guys. I do. Yes, it did raise up. It sure did. It sure did. That's good. Yeah, she's sitting a, she's sitting a little high. Mine, I think, goes a little bit higher than this, though. This is nice, cold AC. Let's see what it looks like in the back here. Very cushy, very, very cushy. Headliner is sagging, falling down a little bit. That window over there doesn't work. You know, she's not perfect and you're not gonna find one that is, at least I don't think you will anyway. If you do, there'll be something wrong with it. I can guarantee you that. Piece of cardboard back here, animal crackers. Okay, hey. You know, for what it is, it ain't bad. This probably won't sell for much. It's got high miles, it's got body damage. It doesn't want to start. Um, how's that air conditioning? Well, it's not as cold as it was. In fact, that's, yeah, that's not nearly as cold as it was. Okay, well, you know what, man? It's an old Range Rover, what do you expect? Let's start it up one more time. She fired right up that time. And now the air's cold again. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I've got an obsession with Range Rovers now. Lord help me. I like this one. I'll keep my eye on it. 
Let's move on to something else. How about an Infinity? We don't do a lot of Infinities. Here's a 2016 QX80 with hail damage, 5.6 liter, 91,000 miles on the what happened to you? Wow. Okay. Um, 91,000 miles on the odometer. Other than the hail damage and the hail damage and the hail damage. Uh, well, she, boy, she got hailed on bad. I mean, this one's real bad. Look at the little sill plate here for the back. Look how beat up that is. It's a limited, too, because there are a limited number of these with severe hail damage like this. Look at the hail, the hail ding in the mirror there. Just shattered it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But, hey... I've said it before and I'll say it again. It gives somebody an opportunity to have something like this that otherwise maybe couldn't have had one. There's a lot of people out there that would not mind riding in this with hail damage. They are not gonna care. Not gonna care. Oh yeah. This is nice. <laughs> this, is, this is real nice. Look at the materials on the doors. Nice, nice stitching, 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 yep, 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 stitching. Look at this. Oh man. Oh, that AC is so cold. Woo! This is nice. Bose stereo system. Bose, Bose. Call it whatever you want, man. I don't care. Let's pop the hood. I guarantee you the important one. I guarantee you everything works on this, man. Everything works on this. We'll take a look in the back real quick. Smells good. Oh, dude. Captain's chairs in the back. DVDs in the headrests. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. Third row seating. Well, of course. Of course. Gotta watch out for this car here, man. Make sure it don't try to cut me. Is that a seat belt? That's a seat belt. But the seat belt's at the front of the car. There's the strut tires, there's the master cylinder, the seat belt is up front. Wow, okay. There's a there's a lot going on on that one, man. A lot going on on that one. I can't help but look at it because it's just, uh, you just see it and it's like, oh my gosh. Well, somebody had recently detailed the engine bay, didn't they? Purrs like a kitten, man. This is a CDS car, so this is not an insurance car. This is on a dealer's lot, I guess, when the hailstorm hit, and maybe, possibly, it still has a clean title, I don't know. Uh, sometimes that happens. You know, some of the uh, smaller dealerships don't have full coverage insurance on their vehicles. And if a hailstorm comes through, well, they just have to eat it. Um, title remains clean, which is great for somebody that you know wants to go through and try to fix all this i don't know who would do that but um title stays clean and the dealer just has to eat it man sucks sucks that's the way it goes sometimes all right this one is nice guys tell me what you think of the qx80 here's a little nissan ultima coupe it looks like it took a a tiny hit in the front but nothing too major it's listed as a run and drive. It's got 112,000 miles on the odometer. Not bad. The tires are in a eh, okay condition. It's a pedal car. I actually enjoy pedal cars, man. It's a mixed bag with pedals. Sometimes you find you got something really cool, really good. Other times you find out you bought junk. You just don't know with these cars. And I think the gamble's kind of fun for me. It's got some paint kind of burned off, clear coat burned off on the roof here. There's obviously been some Bondo work on the back. If I had to guess, since this is a run and drive, why would it be here? Why would somebody have sent it to pedal? My guess would be possibly transmission. I'm gonna guess it's probably the four cylinder, right? And I think we all know the four bangers in these were paired with notoriously bad trans axles. So that's, that's gonna be my guess. Let's put the hood prop up and I guess we will, uh, let's just take a look at the fluid real quick and see what it looks like. It doesn't hurt to, uh, oh, 
Well, it would help if I could figure out how to open the... There we go. Dang, man. Okay, she's burnt. Yeah, she's burnt pretty good. Yeah, if I remember right, uh, Nissan's transmission fluid is uh, is clear. Now, it has been a little while since I had that, uh, that 3.5R that we did, the Ultima 3.5R, so I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure that the transmission fluid for these is supposed to be clear. And this is, uh, this is a very dark brown. So, I don't know. I'm thinking... I'm thinking this is probably one I'd pass on. I don't even think I'd give it a chance. Yeah, we'll start it. Fine. Fine. It's got power. If it was going to require a jump start, not going to happen. Not going to happen. This is one of those... I would have to get this on the super, super cheap uh, to be interested in it. Although, in all fairness, a transmission's not the end of the world on a car like this. It's not the hardest transmission to do. Ooh, somebody spray painted the dashboard. Oh boy. Okay. Well, she starts and she runs well. TPMS light, service engine soon light. Let's turn that down. We don't need we don't need all that racket. We do want to know if the AC works, but I can't believe somebody spray painted the dashboard. That's awful. Okay, it goes backwards. Ooh. No, there's something with the transmission. Yeah, you could feel the transmission. I'm assuming this is a CVT. You can, it feels like the transmission is slipping. You ever have an automatic car with a slipping transmission? Well, this feels like that. Except it feels like that in drive when you're not moving, which is weird. You can almost feel it slipping in drive when you're not moving, whereas an automatic, you would be hitting the gas and it would be slipping. Oh yeah. Now she'll move, she'll move. But I think the CVT is slipping. Now, could it just need a fluid exchange? Yes, it really could. Now, you know, chances of that are probably one in a million. The damage is probably already done. I'm not, I'm not all that familiar with how uh, CVT transaxles actually function. But, you know, in my mind, sure, maybe all it needs is a fluid change and down the road she goes again. It's not a bad looking car, guys. I don't care if it's a V6. I don't care. Doesn't bother me at all. This is a beautiful body style. And I know a lot of you are going to argue with me on this. In my opinion, this is the most beautiful. Okay, not most beautiful. I think the Smokey and the Bandit, that was probably, that was it. But aside from that, I love the aerodynamics. I love all the curves and angles. I mean, they really went all out on the design of this car, man. It took a crunch in the back. It is going to be the V6. Guarantee you there's no uh, there's no V8 under that hood. But it's still a mean looking car. Needs a paint job. And it looks like the tires are all flat. And it has T-tops, which is probably why it says bio. Oh, the windshield has... What? I've never seen this before. The windshield is busted. It's cracked here and then it separates where the windshield actually sank into the car all the way through here i wonder if this is underwater or something and the pressure of the water actually started breaking the glass unlikely unlikely it does say it does say uh bio though let's take a look well there's been rodents in it yeah i probably don't want to breathe that Gonna guess it doesn't run. <laughs> That's probably a good guess. Try not to breathe any of that. It doesn't look that bad inside, guys. It doesn't. She needs a lot of work, though. This would be fun. This would be fun to jerk out the... <laughs> that sounded wrong. This would be fun to jerk out the... the... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, 3,800. And she has been sitting a long, long time. All oh, the wiring has been eaten. Look at this. Look at that. They ate it all. They ate it all. Yeah. Yeah, this is a wrap. This is a wrap. But this would still be fun 
to pull out that little V6, drop in a carbureted V8. Remember guys, I still have a carbureted V8 and an automatic transmission that I'm trying to find something to put it into, man. And this right here, I don't know. This one's in pretty rough shape, but something like this would be a lot of fun. Now, this is one I missed out on yesterday uh, when I was bidding and winning a few things, but this one I just missed, man. I mean, I just missed it by this, and I was so upset because as soon as I saw it, the auction was over. It's an expedition, man. I don't know what year. It's got 227,000 miles. It's an O2. It's got some paint peel. The tires have seen better days. The paint looks pretty decent, though. The body looks pretty decent from what I can see. And mileage doesn't scare me, man. It really doesn't. Here, it's something I always notice. Look, at, look down at the exhaust pipe here. See how clean it is? All right, if it was full of oil, you know, a real oily substance, you know, okay, maybe a little concerned. The fact that it's so clean it may even be reason for concern. <laughs> that could scream head gasket. Uh, leaking water or coolant into the combustion chambers will actually clean a lot of gunk out of the engine. Don't get me wrong, it's not good for it. Don't do it, it's not good for it. But a, an old mechanics trick that my grandpa used to use on carbureted engines, he had a squirt bottle, you know, like you squirt your cat or your dog with. And he'd come out and he'd open up the uh, air breather and he'd squirt just a little bit of a, of a mist of water into the carburetor and it would help clean the carbon out of the engine. It's old school fuel treatment, I guess. You know, that's how you clean the pistons and the combustion chambers and everything. Got some paperwork here. I don't see any lights on. Of course, it's big inside. She's huge. She actually looks pretty good. You know, aside from the seat, that's perfectly normal. And the armrest there, perfectly normal. Dashboard looks good as well. I'm sure it's got no power. We'll have to pop the hood. I'm fine with that. It's listed as a run and drive. It is. It's listed as a run and drive. So let's... No. Dead as a doornail. That's okay. It's all right. Because I brought El Booster Pack. Yeah, I really wanted to check this one out, man, because I was like, dang, this one looked this one looked pretty nice, other than, uh, you know, need a little bit of paint. 4.6. It's a two valve, not a three valve. So that's good news. The battery's melted right there. Something melted right into the battery. There's a hole in it. That's not good. Okay. Well, hell, let's throw a jump pack on it. See if she runs. All right, let's see. Let's see what she does. I hear clicking. That's a good sign. Uh, are you ready? Ooh, I don't know about you guys, but that does not sound like healthy compression. Now I'll give it credit here. It is completely out of gas. I don't know if you guys can see the gauges down there, but she's out of gas. But honestly, the compression, it doesn't sound right, man. Okay, I'm not gonna waste my battery pack. I don't think this one runs, so we're gonna move on to something else. All right, I love this car. 2013 Hyundai Genesis. Now the only question is, is it a V6 or is it the Turbo 4? So this is a start, not a drive, so that's something to keep in mind. 86,000 miles, what do you think, a clutch? Maybe it was road hard, put away wet? Could very well be a clutch. It's got the titanium, burnt titanium tips. She looks nice. It's the 2.0 turbo. Eh, 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 eh. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with the 2.0 turbo at all. I just personally prefer the naturally aspirated 3.8 liter. I'm telling you, they are sick. They're sick. Now, I don't want to piss off anybody that loves the 2.0 turbo, okay? It's a fine car, but <laughs> I prefer that V6, man. That V6 is a beast this is not hail damaged it's an automatic oh i was hoping it was a stick i just assumed it was a stick that's what i get for assuming yeah okay well i find it very difficult to believe that the transmission could be bad in this 80 miles 
Uh, I guess stranger things have happened, but for me, I find that very, very difficult to believe. So let's throw a jump on it and let's see if it will move. All right, here we go. Windshield wipers are on. Oh, let's turn them off. I don't know where off is, but there we go. Here we go. Ooh, that's not happy. She is not happy at all. Definitely a misfire. Oh, look at the smoke blowing out from under the hood. Okay. That's a wrap. That is a wrap. I don't know where all that smoke was coming from. Oh, it's coming from the blow-off valve. Wow. <laughs> wow. All that smoke was coming out of the blow-off valve. Yeah, I'm going to say there's something, there's something very wrong there. I don't know. It could be turbo seals. Uh, but honestly, yeah, it could be turbo seals and it could be blowing oil into the, into the engine, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. There's definitely something blowing oil into somewhere and the engine is not running properly. So, uh, we're not even going to bother with, will it move? We're just going to move right along. Well, some of you may recognize this. I had to come back to it because I wanted to take one more look at it. The buy it now price on this, in my opinion, was just astronomical. It was out of this world and I'm not going to pay it. I did win it though. I did. I won it and I won it for a little more than what I really wanted to pay for it. Now, I was hoping, you know, I could get this for about 800 bucks, put a Mako paint job on it. If it needs tires, tires, whatever. And, and, and probably send it down the road, honestly. Come on, you know I'm not going to keep this. You know I'm not going to keep this. Maybe put a grill on it and get the hood release. Uh, the tires are dry rotted, so she'll need a set of tires too. But, uh, you know, I won the bid at $1,150. And the seller's asking like $22.50 for it. And I don't know, maybe some of you out there will say, yes, it's absolutely worth $22.50. For me, it's not worth $22.50, guys. I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see the content. You know, it's a nice car inside and out. The body is great. It just needs a paint job and a set of tires as far as I could tell. But, but until you get it out on the road, you don't really know what it needs. You know what I mean? And 2250 for a 1983 and this daggum hood thing here. Now there is one problem with this. It's a common problem. And no, it's not oil leaks. Believe it or not, this thing doesn't appear to leak anything. I mean, it is very clean underneath. So I, I feel like it's worth the 1150 to me, but it's not worth uh, 2250 plus fees. You know, at 1150, I'm probably looking at $1,500 or so uh, after fees. Uh, so to me, it's just not worth it. Okay, let's start it up. All right, she runs great. She does look, the oil pressure is pegged out. But watch what happens when I turn the key off. It doesn't turn off. Yeah, it's yeah, it doesn't it doesn't turn off. Now, there is a way to kill it other than putting it in fifth gear and installing it, which is how I did it last time. Monkey Wrench Mike uh, got a hold of me and said this is a common issue with these these older diesels. There's a button right here. And that's how you kill it. I'm guessing that it just shuts off fuel supply to the engine. And that's the end of it. This thing is so simple to work on. From what I can tell, everything on this looks very, very easy. I'm assuming this right here is like, what is this, your diesel pump? It looks like you got a diesel filter right here. And I'm guessing this would be your diesel pump. And I don't know if you open this, what's inside of it. Maybe that's how you bleed it or something. Hell, I don't know. I don't know anything about diesels, guys. But whatever, whatever. There's another filter right there. I don't know what that is. Oil filter, diesel filter. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know anything about these. I do know 
that the damn thing runs great. It does. And I also know that the clutch feels good. It goes into every gear like it should. And this is nice because this isn't an old, old diesel that doesn't have glow plugs. This has glow plugs. So, and she fires right up, man. She does. She fires right up. She runs good. The important window works. I don't believe it has air conditioning. I know the battery's bad. It doesn't have power steering. The power steering's not working. So that's something to you know, figure out. Either way, I want it. I want it for $1,150 or whatever. Hell, I don't even see the exhaust. Where is the exhaust? Where is the exhaust? Ugh. There it is. It's over there. Everything underneath looks to be in really good shape. Like, you can tell it's been sitting for a long time. And that's the cool thing about diesel, aside from growing algae. Um, it's not like gasoline. You know, our gasoline with ethanol starts breaking down after uh, like 60 or 90 days. Diesel can last a long time. You can fire something up that's been sitting for years and years, and she might run. That power steering is gone though, so that's something to uh, that's something to take into consideration too. And the fact that it doesn't uh, it doesn't shut off. I'll tell you what. Instead of getting out and pushing the button. I think my preferred way of killing it, and the brakes feel good too. Oh, it doesn't have fifth gear. It's got one, two, three, and four. So, there, and then reverse. There's reverse right there. And first, second, third, and fourth. I just put it in fourth gear, start letting off the clutch, hold the brake. Done. Push the e-brake down, turn the key off. And uh, that's a wrap for me. I don't know, guys. Tell me what you think. It's going to need a little bit of work, but honestly, a Mako paint job and a new grill would make all the difference on this car. It really would. It'd make this thing look almost brand new. Now, this is just comical, man. This is a, an old school Chevy pickup truck, right? Just a 1500 with a little extended cab. It's a non-runner, a quarter million miles, blah, 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 blah. You know the deal. If you see what's wrong with it, go ahead and comment. Uh, because I'm looking, <laughs> looking at it and I'm like, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Do you see it yet? I'm aiming the camera down for a reason, guys. <laughs> Tell me if you caught it. Uh, <laughs> um, those are Ford hubcaps. Those are Ford hubcaps. Look at that. <laughs> Somebody had a hell of a sense of humor. I appreciate that. Uh, whoever owned this truck and sent it here with Ford hubcaps on it, thank you. Thank you. That honestly made my day. <laughs> made my damn day man i'm not interested in this at all no interest in this at all um just seeing it sitting here with ford hubcaps just threw me for a loop man although i'll tell you what for the mileage and everything it's it's in relatively good shape not bad uh, you can tell it's been sitting a long time though and uh i'm not really looking for another car that's been sitting for a long time at least not today. So I want to end on a 1985 Nissan 300ZX. And I got to be very careful with this car. Another one looks like it's been sitting a long time. And damn it, I just said I'm not interested. But I may be interested in this one. It depends on if it's an automatic or a stick. If it's a stick, I am interested. Man. The only problem that I see with this right now, with me getting close to it, is it has wasps all around it. So apparently... These wasps had made it a home, and they obviously don't want me around. I'm trying not to get too close. They are all over this car on this side. Maybe I can get over over on this side without getting without getting stung. It's an automatic. Oh man, I would be very careful here. I don't want to. It's been sitting a very very long time. They washed it, but as you can see on the inside here of the pillar, you can see all the mildew and stuff from it sitting it's actually not in bad shape at all the interior looks really really nice it's a non-runner it is an automatic as i said and i said i wasn't interested if it was an automatic but i think i might go back on that oh 
the wasps are coming. Jesus. Okay, okay, all right, it's cool. It's cool, guys, it's cool. Dang, man. How am I supposed to look at this thing? Oh, jeez. Look, man, I'm allergic, all right? That, <laughs> I'm not running for no reason. I'm allergic. They are, they are really angry. They are really angry. Uh, I just want to pop the hood. That's it. I'm not going to try to start. I'm not going to do none of that. I just want to pop the hood, make sure nothing is torn apart under there. All right, GoPro battery died. I got the hood open. And I haven't been stung yet. And it looks like the wasps may have, maybe they've gone a different direction. I, I don't know. I'm not going to spend a lot of time over here messing with it though. I do see a Gates timing belt. I see somebody splattered paint all over it. I see a lot of wires that are just disconnected and, and hanging. More wires, more wires, uh, lots of disconnected wires. The fact there's no timing belt cover is a little concerning, not exceptionally concerning, but it is a little concerning for sure. Power steering pump is disconnected. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know this. I, I thought it was like an all original, you know, unmolested. Um, but after popping the hood, I think we can tell that <laughs> yeah, somebody molested the poor girl. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be interested in this one. So look, I'm going to get out of here, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the motorcycle content, you know, let me know. Hit the thumbs up button and comment down below that you enjoyed throwing in a little bit of that motorcycle ride. Man. Man. Come on now. Uh, <sighs> let me know if you enjoyed the motorcycle ride up here. If you did, I can throw some of that stuff into future videos. If it's not something you're interested in, definitely comment that below. Let me know you're not interested. We'll just see how it goes. I enjoy sharing some motorcycle content with you. Um, I don't get to ride much, but I think it's fun for me to be able to show you guys that I went from not riding a bike at all, not even being able to, never riding a bike, to jumping on one, and I've got a Road King now, man, and I go out and just cruise around occasionally, and it's fun to take you guys with me, so drop those comments below. Share the video with your friends if you think your friends would enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of that good stuff, man. Auto Auction Rebuilds. Guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. It is Friday. You're going to see this video today. I'm going to go home and edit it, and it's getting hot, so I'm going to bounce. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again. Well, we're going to see you tomorrow. So yeah, don't miss tomorrow's video. I bought a 2010 Land Rover Range Rover Sport HSE 5.0 liter supercharged 510 horsepower from auction for a fraction of what that thing costs new. New, that was an $85,000 SUV, and I got it for dirt cheap. So, uh, everybody told me not to. Everybody, you've seen the videos. Sam Crack, Hoovy's Garage, Doug DeMiro, Car Wizard, there's more. Uh, everybody tells you not to buy one, so I bought one. I said, to hell with it, let's do it, because I am going to be the only YouTuber to ever buy a fully sorted out Range Rover for next to nothing. Did I? Did I win? Did I accomplish that goal? Is it fully sorted? Or did I get bit hard and there's something seriously wrong with it? Watch tomorrow's video, guys. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, that video drops. I'll see you there.